Yeah. So is there anything you would say to someone like, what should a customer like never do? Or like, no, never getting a tattoo? Never right, piss never. off your tattoo artist. <laughs> First and foremost. Hand tough. I'm not going to get you cred with this crowd. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing the interview. I'll call you back. Okay, so, I'll, what should they sorry. not do ever? In, in in what terms? Like, like when getting piss a tattoo. Us off. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't <laughs> piss off a tattooist. Don't argue with them. You know, uh, um, bring money. That helps. <laughs> um, there's more of a list of do's than don't do's. Like uh, yeah, bathe. That's <laughs> Oh, you'd be surprised, dude. If, 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 yeah. I, if I get where you're driving at, I, I think, are you talking about like what they should or shouldn't get? Because like that we don't. Or that we don't. That too. Really, but like as far as like etiquette or like coming into a shop, and I think the main thing that that I think bothers us is somebody coming in with an idea and saying, "I want to go to Matt, and I really love Matt's work, and um, here's my idea." I want it specifically like this in these specific colors. No, 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 don't draw it that way. Draw it like this. And like, why are you going to Matt then? You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer somebody to come in with a laundry list of ideas, a general idea of uh, style, and then let us run with it because that's where you're gonna get the best tattoo. If you stifle the artist, um, then they're not gonna be at their best. And yeah. not, not to mention, why in God's name are you going to a specific artist? And telling them how to do like, what what is it that you like about their art? I'm confused, you know. Yeah. So, like, yeah, go go to the artist, give them a give them a list of your ideas, give them the space that they need to work with, give them some reference, and then leave them the fuck alone and let them like you know let them do what they're supposed to do. And that's you know like anything you know I mean like you know if somebody's hanging over somebody's back uh, when when somebody's building over their building their house, yeah. you know it's like. Who are you? Like, you know, this is this is our realm. You know, let us let us do it. And if not, like you know, if you want to be a control freak around about it, uh, draw it yourself. You know, make it your life's project to draw your tattoo or something. <laughs> draw you know? your like, tattoo. Like, that's, yeah. DIY tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> little pet peeve, I guess. Alright, and uh, I'll ask you guys about this uh, show that you're having, the art show. I see this is the flyer. Let Matt uh, feel that. Um, this is our, our second annual uh, charity uh, auction art show that we do in the fall. We get, um, it, it's mainly for Canadian artists and uh, we, we get artists from all over Canada, of course just because of our associations, mainly through, uh, through Ontario, but as far reaching as uh, Nova Scotia and British Columbia, we have artists send us artwork and we do a big auction and it's a big party. This year is uh, called Bold Will Hold and we hold it at the Six Degrees uh, nightclub which is just down the street from the shop. Um, last year's was the, the El Arte de la Muerte, uh, Art of the Dead, it was a Day of the Dead theme and we had, uh, I don't even remember the numbers, an incredible amount of artwork come in from different tattooists all over Canada and we auction that off and the auction money goes to uh, Art City St. Jamestown, which is a, uh, a children's art program that we, uh, we donate to, which is something that we, uh, we adopted from uh, Tattoos.com and the Northern Nick Exposure people. They, uh, they have done this similar things in the past where they auction things off for, uh, for charities and Art City St. Jamestown is one that uh, we were involved in before. Uh, it's a really awesome party, essentially. We have mm -hmm. entertainment, food, drinks, uh, your peers within the industry all coming in to not only take a gander at but to spend money on these wonderful pieces of art. And like I said before, and it's very much welcome, uh, open to the public. And it, yeah, mm -hmm. completely uh, open to the public. Um, yeah, this year's is Bold Will Hold, which is a celebration of the traditional tattoo, which is uh, something that. Uh, a lot of people have uh, opened up to in the last few years. They've realized that though you can do so many different styles and things with tattoos, the traditional styles are a classic and hold well and a lot of people can resonate with them because they're a simple broken down image. There's going to be a lot of art in that style. Come on out, bring your dollars, it all goes to charity. 
and there'll be food <laughs> yeah. and entertainment. That's good. And a social distortion cover band. Social distortion cover That's band. That's especially good. <laughs> Suicide Girls. Even better. <laughs> um, George and I get a little tipsy entertaining on its own, so. Definitely. So how did you come up with that idea in the first place? That dude at the crossroads told me about it. Uh, <laughs> Philip Barbosa actually passed this idea on to us. Uh, Phil, uh, Phil is essentially the, the fifth beetle here, or whatever, the eighth beetle. <laughs> the eighth beetle, uh, a driving force. He's right. the driving force behind uh, uh, Stick and Poke, which is a printing company. Yeah. And he is, if someone could harness his thought processes, it, like we could solve the energy problem. This guy just comes wow. up with the, the best things ever. Full of ideas. Um, so the bold will hold concept is his. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the doing of this party, I think that was something that George and I had uh, come with, up with just in the first couple of weeks of uh, opening the shop and seeing which direction we wanted to go with it. It was part of the mandate for opening this place was to bring the, uh, bring the tattoo art community together. Um, we do it on a microcosmic level with you know people that we know within the city or whatever on a, on a pretty regular basis and have little events in, in the shop. But having a big sort of Canada-wide event was something that we, we had planned right from the get-go. So I mean, um, yeah, that, that there, there, there were there were a couple other things that are similar that we were associated with. Yeah. So we took ideas from once again the Northern Ink Exposure, the Toronto Tattoo Convention. Mm -hmm. They've right. done art fusion projects and art show projects, and uh, a lot of that stuff went to charity. Rich there was uh, Rich Winnipeg. Hanford out of Winnipeg did the uh, Just for Kicks show, which yeah. was all painting on shoes and. Uh, uh, that was a very successful show, and uh, just you know, talking with other artists. There's a there's a great tattooist and artist, Kurt Wiscombe, out of Winnipeg, who uh, very leans incredibly towards the arts as well. Recently opened up his own uh, was it Skull and Bones Gallery, and uh, just you know, it's just ideas that you pick up from talking to these interesting people, whether they yeah. be tattoo artists and otherwise. And it's really something that George and I wanted to put together, and we got the chance to, and it worked out, and we're doing it again, and we'll do it again after that. Nice. Um, and, um, let me see. Oh, yeah. So, and just, um, I'll ask you guys a personal question now. So, what kind of um, no, interests and passions do you have besides the tattoos? Oh, Tattooing. Um, <laughs> mountain climbing and <laughs> I like that she no. laughed at that. I don't know. What, what if? I could be mountain climbing. Um, interest outside. Outside of that. What's funny is the last two and a half years. Interests? Yeah. Or actually able to do anything. Because uh, yeah. A, being a tattooist, especially a custom a tattooist, takes up a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, I love music. I've put like five albums on my iTunes in the last two and a half years. Like, this place consumes <laughs> us. But, you know, I mean, like, it, it's, it's very rewarding, but oh my, consuming, like, yeah. we don't know anyone else outside of this shop anymore. I've walked the same L shape from my home to the shop for about two and a half years. To probably, like, if you had one of those iPhones to track your movements, yeah. I could probably go and see the dozen times that I've been off of that L shape yeah. wow. in the last two and a half years. But, like, you like music? and Sure, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I was what always, is this? I was always involved with music. music. <laughs> deep into tattooing, I was very involved with music. Okay. I was, uh, you know, I, I, my idea was to become a music journalist at one point, and like, I mean, I ran a bar that had bands, and cool. I was in a band, and like, you know, so I mean, like, there was a lot, you know, I, you know, I was deeply involved with that, and like, I mean, uh, we, we have families, and we're obviously deeply dedicated and devoted to our families, but it's just, yeah, this, this really takes up, I, you know, I never really believed how, how much uh, this would, you know, sort of consume you if you took it seriously, because for, I think for a lot of years I tattooed and was passable and could lay down, a, you know, a solid piece off the wall and was contented with that, but when I decided to step it up and, and really work hard to become an artist, I, I don't think I believed that it was going to be this. Yeah, it would be encompassing. Tenfold. You know, like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all, it's all about this. Thing. 
Okay. Well, is there anything, um, any music you listen to now while working in the shop? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I've been listening to the same 5,000 songs for like, two and a half years. So, uh, okay, so what are some of your favorites? I've been really getting into like, or, like I've been really into Violet Soul music and like, uh, uh, the new Shania Twain album. Girl. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, you can deny it all you want. Horrifying. But, uh, <laughs> horrifying. No, 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 I'm absolutely kidding. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I'm sure I'm stuff that. lately, like Mooney Suzuki and uh, King Con, and um, and then like yeah, old soul stuff for the most part. Uh, kind of falling back in love with the Clash. I don't know. The Clash? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. They're my favorite band. <laughs> Is All I hear from this room is Scissor Sisters, 24-7. <laughs> Scissor Sisters. Oh, it's on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 